Welcome to Sekiro Shadows Dank Twice. This is gonna be my playthrough of this game. Uh, of course you knew at some point I was gonna do this. I'm a Friendsoft kind of guy. But the only one I can't do is uh, Bloodborne because I'm not about to buy a PlayStation just for one game. So this is gonna be my take on the game. This is how I get through it. You guys know the drill. I am going to be skipping cutscenes because I'd like to at least have a chance to get monetized, but I'll uh, summarize the story for you. Let's get started here. Now, this is my second attempt to actually record this first episode on account of the fact that there were uh, audio problems on the first one, so let's just go ahead and start a new game again here. So, basically, Sekiro, FromSoft's most recent game. Let's skip all this, and skip all this, and here we are. So, this is Wolf, also known as Okami, but mainly Wolf. And we live in the kingdom of Ashina, which is a state within the uh, country of Japan. It was, of course, set during the Sengoku era of Japan. And Ashina is uh, currently defending against the Interior Ministry of Japan because the Interior Ministry doesn't like the fact that Ashina has immortality for some reason or another. So we were adopted on the battlefield by an old shinobi called Owl, and uh, he trained us up. So here we are, that's us now. Something happened, we lost our memory, yada yada. Some chick threw a thing down a well. We were sitting in this well this whole time because our spirits were broken or whatever. We'll find out more as we go. So it's a very different game in comparison to uh, previous FromSoft titles. There's a lot more verticality to it, a lot more movement to it. So it's, uh, it's just a completely different feel. And it's got stealth aspects to it, which uh, the previous games did not have. It's it's at, it's completely meant to be a different game altogether than what we've played. But there are still some recognizable signs of the old Souls thing, so let's go on ahead. This is the tutorial area, and we're gonna get a lot of these boxes popping up here. <laughs> Yeah, so that's their take on the situation. We are the private shinobi of the Divine Heir, Lord Kuro, who is a wee little boy. He was taken from us years ago, and now we are sad because of that. So now we are going to retrieve him. shimmy shimmy sham shimmy across like I said very different from previous from soft titles jumping is a uh, much more core mechanic of the game as is climbing around it's a it's a platformer more than uh, any other of the souls type games have been uh, and of course again many differences but uh, you know it's a it's still a great game and I don't need it to be exactly like Dark Souls so there's our boy right there let's go in TLDR, you found me. Here's your sword. Good times. Alright. And uh, a little bit more. <laughs> Healing Gourd, basically our Estus flask. <laughs> そのはい。うん。いや、
狼をそなたからも何かあるのか So this right here is something you only get if you've uh, beaten the game once. Uh, and of course I have. If you haven't beaten the game, and uh, I assume if you're watching this for instructional purposes that you, uh, you haven't, then you won't get this option. Giving him Kuro's Charm will uh, add some difficulty to it, uh, and it will also give you greater rewards. And the difficulty is uh, something that even cuts through your skill. Essentially, you're going to take chip damage from uh, blocking and even deflecting blows, so we're not going to do that. All right, and of course again, there's these little tutorial boxes that keep popping up. Now, I said I'm going to cut out the cutscenes, but I'm still going to let the dialogue play, uh, so that way, you know, we at least get a sense of the story going on. So let's just go ahead and equip our uh, our item. See, right now we're at. Uh, basically almost no vitality that's our HP in this game we take a drink and now we're at half HP it's a little bit mean that they make you do it this way but you know we'll talk more about that later go ahead and head up the stairs here so we can get ourselves some pellets uh, the gourd is going to be your uh, again Estus flask your rechargeable reusable uh, healing item and of course you can add to it as time goes on the pellets are uh, more finite you have to find pellets to use pellets and if you've used a pellet then uh, you've used it up for good you get plenty in this game don't worry so this tutorial area ahead of us can completely be skipped absolutely 100% can just run through uh, I'm going to actually go through it the proper way, so that way I can cover some of the basics of fighting, because it's, it's, again, it's a very different uh, way to fighting than previously. So, as this thing says, posture and death blows. There is a new mechanic to fighting things here, and we're going to take a look at that, but I'm going to kill this guy first. And then this guy. before we discuss the uh, main mechanics of gameplay. So there's uh, there's a new thing going on called the, uh, the posture bar, which is just much better explained if you give me a minute here to uh, clean out some of this trash. But basically the posture bar is what determines when you get to perform a death blow. That's completely separate from your HP. All right, let's go. Get dead. Boom. So, completely separate from your vitality or HP, the posture bar is what determines when you get to perform a death blow. Uh, the HP, of course, when it runs to zero, you are dead. Simple as that. Uh, but it's not always the case with enemies. Of course, if you do reduce an enemy's HP to zero, they will die. Posture, on the other hand, is uh, something that determines, well, how, uh, I guess, ha how, hmm, how much damage or, no, how much stamina you have. I suppose posture can be best compared to stamina. Uh, and stamina is, of course, something that enemies and you have. Once you uh, get the posture bar up to maximum, that makes it uh, possible for you to do a death blow. Regular ass enemies, you can uh, just, you know, hack and slash your way through. But bosses, you have to kill them via death blow. So, leader Shigenori Yamauchi is going to be a, a better prime example of things. So, the idea here is, uh, of course, you gotta, re you gotta get his posture bar up. So, I screwed that up, because, uh... <laughs> I'm kind of sucking right now, but in a way it's kind of a good thing uh, on account of the fact that uh, I didn't really have uh, much going for me there. See, as I said a moment ago, it was kind of mean that they only gave us one healing gourd drunk and it, you know, and an empty health bar. Now we have a full health bar and a heal to go from. So, quick little thing, the uh, enemies without hats, you can basically just mow your way through. You can uh, just bam, bam, they, they don't have very good posture. The enemies with the hats, however, this guy right here, 
They are much more resistant. They have much more posture. What are you doing, my guy? Ow. Like, right here. I can wail on him. It's not going to have much effect on him. That's, you gotta parry or deflect his blow, a perfect deflect, in order to actually uh, break his posture. So, basically, again, with the enemies without hats, you can just, you know, smack them around like the fools they are. The enemies with hats, you gotta finesse just a little bit. Unlike with previous FromSoft titles, Getting crowded is not a big deal in this game. I mean, it is a big deal, but as you saw me do right there, you can just pow, 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 and, uh, you know, eventually you're going to break somebody's posture if you keep that up and uh, be able to kill them, and, you know, you're, you're a bit more able to get yourself out of a sticky situation than you were in previous games. So let's take uh, the leader on again, and this time do it right. So parry. And what got back and then you see his posture at the top got filled up, and so now I do a death blow. What you should learn from this fight is that you don't wanna just do a whole round of, you know, nothing but parries, cause watch. He swings at me, and then his posture just, you know, goes back down. He swings at me, and then his posture just goes back down. You can't just beat the enemies by waiting for them to swing at you. You gotta mix it up. Generally a good rhythm is uh, take two swings, then be ready to deflect, take two swings, be ready to deflect, and we just mowed the guy down as you can see right there. If I had been playing properly then that would have been the result at first. And as I said before, you could just completely skip all this, just run through, come over here, that's it, you're done. You can just get through. You don't have to bother with this tutorial area. There's not even any rewards for doing it. Uh, they don't award you uh, any experience. They don't award you any money. Sen in this game basically is what it's called, is, is money. So just, you know, skip through if you want to. So here's the door, and let's call the Divine Air. And, of course, skipping the cutscene. So now you'll notice that our sword is not drawn and we are not capable of running. That is because we are in the presence of the Divine Heir, Lord Kuro, who is an immortal child. He cannot die. He cannot even be cut or hurt. Isn't that some? Well, let's go on. Right now we're trying to evacuate Lord Kuro from Ashina because it's gotten dangerous here. This guy up ahead of us, Genichiro Ashina, is the guy who's in charge of the whole general resistance against the invading uh, ministry forces, uh, interior ministry forces, whatever you want to call it. He wants to use the power of immortality that Lord Kuro possesses in order to uh, beef himself up, and uh, that way they can much better resist the ministry forces. But Lord Ishin, the HNIC, doesn't want to do that because that is silly. You're imprisoning a child, you're doing just nefarious things to protect your land. No, that doesn't fly with uh, good old Ishina. Or Ishin Ashina. So this is the classic FromSoft supposed to lose fight, and I'm probably going to lose it. But I'll do my best to make a good fight out of it. I'll be very surprised if I actually manage to win this fight, mainly because there, that right there is one of the types of dangerous blows. That right there is the other one. And if I was able to gain some experience before this fight, which is impossible, then I would have been able to uh, do something about that. As it is, I have to try and avoid it, and that's very hard to do. Now, uh, with the sweep attacks, because there's three types of deadly attack, the sweep, the thrust, and the grab. With the sweep attack, you can do something right off the bat about it, uh, which is just jumping on his head. But I can't do anything about thrust attacks right now. I either have to manage to avoid them, which is rough, or I have to, uh, well, basically get my ass kicked. Nope. See, he's, he's gonna hit you with that shit. 
I'll try and demonstrate, you know, what to do about a sweep attack, but this is not really the place for it. But in boss fights, you want to try and uh, mix it up. You want to try and mix it up a bit with a bit of a bit of that and a bit of this, and then be nice. Got that shit right off the bat, and bang, bang, clang, clang, back, 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 back. Ease. Whoop. No, you don't. See, it's not even a big deal if your posture bar gets filled up. You get stunned for like a split second, and if you just dodge roll away, then you're fine. So, obviously he was going to win. I would have had a much better chance if, uh, <laughs> would have had a much better chance if I had the counter for the thrust attacks, but it is what it is. So he cut my arm off, they took Lord Kuro. Now I wake up in a strange place and there's a strange dude. He gave me a different arm. Now I have an arm. It's a weird arm. This is Orangutan, the sculptor. He likes sculpting Buddha statues. These are his work. This is not his work. <laughs> まことso, as he said, something something Buddha statue. Basically, that statue is involved with opening up an entire section of the game. So, uh, I'm not going to go out of my way to get all the dialogue here, uh, and talking to him right now, you know, it's kind of pointless, we get the idea. So let's go out into the wider world. Remnants, we're not going to encounter because I play offline. Not sure why, I just suppose I like to be able to play offline. So here is our, uh little bonfire here. It is the Sculptor's Idol, and it's where you can rest. You rest, you get a refill of all your stuff. Your, uh, well, the Spirit Emblems, uh, which is on the lower left there, uh, below Memory, and uh, which we'll have a use for later. Then, of course, the uh, other stuff that we've got. Now, XP, experience, works a lot differently in this game. When you gain skill points, number one, you don't, you know, raise up a specific stat or something like that. What you're doing is you're choosing skills from a skill menu, which we'll have access to later. Uh, it does, There is a bit of a punishment for uh, dying in the field, but it's nowhere near as harsh as it used to be. Basically, as you kill enemies, you uh, gain experience towards your next skill point. That's that zero that you see on the right there underneath attack power. Once you've filled up and gained a skill point, you get to keep that skill point. It's yours. They, they can't take that away from you. You can just use it. Uh, but if you do die, you lose half of your sin, which again is your money, and half of your progress towards the next skill point. So it's not that bad. It's it's actually a lot more forgiving. The uh, There's no getting back any uh, lost skill point, or sorry, no getting back any lost experience or sin. They're just gone forever. You can't run back to a soul pile. But there is Unseen Aid, which you see on the top right. 30%, that's the maximum that you can go. Uh, that basically means that there's a 30% chance that when you die, something's going to kick in, and uh, you're going to not lose half your sin and half your experience. So that's good. And of course, when you raced at a Sculptor's Idol, I have the urge to call it a bonfire. When you rest at a Sculptor's Idol, you, uh, of course, reset the entire area, which also loads up whatever's next. So, hello. ただ、あなたを助けようと。<laughs> ただ、あなたを助けようと、そう仰せつかっています。信用しろとは言いませんですが、私はアルジの命を果たさねばならぬのです。あなたが持っている 
薬水の氷炭それはもともと私が作り上げたものです薬師として助けとなりましょう Well, thank you very much, Emma. She's basically your firekeeper. And you do at least have to present the healing gourd to her at least once. この氷炭。お主が作ったというのか。はい。元は苦労様のため、あなたが譲り受けていたのですね。気づいているかもしれませんが、この氷炭の薬水は、おのずと湧き出します。月たとて。少し休めばまた満ちるでしょう。薬師としての助けとは。氷炭の種をお持ちください。種だと。はい。薬水は氷炭の種より湧き出します。新たな種を加えれば薬水の傘が増すでしょう。手に入れたら持ってきてください。わ
it's just there for the sake of, you know, having a sculptor's idol. And since you have two idols, now you can do fast travel anywhere you want. Now, one of the things that they threw into this game, which is pretty cool, is the homeward idol. That is basically a free homeward bone. You get to go home whenever you want. You can either go to the last idol you rested at, or you can go back to the dilapidated temple. I leave that choice up to you. Now, of course, there are branching paths in this game, and because I'd like to actually get a little bit of XP together and some gold, I'm going to go ahead and take the lower path. As the game just pointed out, you can do a stealth death blow. Target the enemy, leap from above, see the red dot, hit R1, he's dead. Boom. And as this thing points out, to acquire enemy loot, you'll hold down the uh, X button on the Xbox controllers and square button on PlayStation controllers. I'm just going to hoover up any items that I see. Uh, if you hold down the thing when you're running at an item, then that'll actually auto-pick it up for you, which is good. As you can see, there are stealth mechanics. You can see when the enemies have spotted you. And if you actually want to, you can just go ahead and uh, run away and disengage from the battle and, you know, try to wait for them to lose interest in you. Eventually they will. So I'm going to go up here, because there's this guy to take out. I'd like to get, you know, a couple skill points together if I can, and I'd like to get 500 sen together as well if I can. All right. Now here, we've got another type of enemy. He's got a hat, but uh, he's also got a gun. And in any situations where one of the enemies has a gun, you want to kill him because he's going to be the biggest threat. Those guns pack a punch, and they are exceptionally perceptive. All right, so here's a ledge death blow. Took him out, nobody's the wiser. Okay, sneak around back of this guy. Penetrate him. And a fistful of ash. Useful item for, uh, you know, distracting an enemy, get them to uh, cover their face up. You want to try and do as many stealth death blows as you can, because, you know, that's a zero risk situation. And here's an Ungo's sugar. There are basically several different types of Buddhist sugars. Uh, where if you eat them, you get a temporary buff. In this case, uh, this reduces the damage that you take to vitality. Now, past this gate, there's going to be some wolves, and I'm not too keen to fight the wolves, actually, so I'd like to avoid them if I can. So I'm just going to go up here and go around there. There's a few skill points to be had in it, but they don't drop any loot. Then again, there is loot down there, so, you know, we'll see how this goes get our third sculptor's idol. Hey Fido! And uh, the dogs in this game actually do fight like wolves. They will run the fuck away from you uh, and wait for one of their uh, one of their brothers to attack you and then when your uh, attention is diverted they'll actually go at you. It's useful. Ceramic shards let you get an enemy's attention when you don't want to get everybody's attention. It'll uh, just kind of draw the enemy out towards you and, you know, you can uh, pick them off one by one. Not a great range on it, though, so I don't recommend it. You definitely want to go up in here, though, because Shuriken Wheel. This is a part that you need in order to fit your prosthetic with a tool. And that's going to be very, 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 very handy coming going and forward. Now, uh... Over here, we got ourselves a mini-boss, so uh, I'm just going to try and sneak up on his ass. Just creep, 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 creep. And uh, we're going to use more or less the same strategy that we used on uh, Leader Yamauchi. Jump on top. As you can see, he's got uh, two little dots above his HP. That means that he is two health bars. You have to take out those two health bars with death blows in order to beat him. I just stole the first one for free. And I'm just going to basically whack, whack, whack at him and uh, deflect some of his shit. No you don't. 
That one is where he gets to recover his posture. As you can see, just there, he did a sweeping attack, a sweeping dangerous attack, and I jumped on his head from over his head. And I was able to uh, beat him, as you can see, fairly easily. The tip here is don't be afraid. Don't try to go full defensive. Some enemies do require full defensive. Uh, don't go all offensive, even though some enemies can go down to all offensive. You gotta find a good blend of it here. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I can avoid that area up there, but as I said, I need myself some uh, XP and some Sen. So I'm going to pick my way through this whole situation and kill some people. You don't want to just, you know, run into the battlefield there and take everybody on. Uh, because you, you will get overwhelmed, a dude will run out from nowhere, it'll, it'll become a messy situation. Whoop! Oh, got spotted! Yoink! I'm gone, bye, you didn't see me. Fuck you. So as you can see, they, uh, they, they got yellow arrows over their heads, which means, uh, hey, I, I know someone's out there, I know he's out there, I saw him. But they don't know precisely where you are. If you wait just a little bit, then the uh, yellow arrows will go away. In some cases, they kind of know where you are, and they won't go away, so you have to, you know, escape further. But in general, uh, you can lose the uh, enemy's attention, the unwanted attention that you've gained by just disengaging and running away. I'm going to try and attack this a little bit more methodically here. Getting that guy, and, and this guy back here, you gotta watch out for, he's kinda hidden. This big fucker right here. I love how I can just drag his ass around. Whoa, somebody just said something. Cool. Alright, Mr. Billy Badass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes the targeting reticle is not your friend. But as I mentioned before, you're not in that big uh, trouble if you uh, get swarmed by enemies. Because you can literally just stand here and spam the block button, and eventually they'll wear themselves out on you. But what you don't want to do, above all, is you do not want to get yourself into a corner. You get into a corner against enemies, they will frag you. Woo! Yeah, getting a little bit tense there. I don't need you to remind me that I can heal myself, game. Long press of the R1 button will uh, do a long stab. And I just earned my first skill point. Aren't I the goodest boy? So, you know, I managed to clear, clean this area out pretty handily. Uh, try not to get into that kind of situation, of course, but if you can, it's not like in Souls games or Bloodborne where you're completely effed. You actually, uh, you can survive that situation. So, over here in this house is a little old lady. Let's go talk to her. Uh, I'm not your son, lady. せがれ<笑> And this is actually very important to get because it unlocks an entire portion of the game that you can't get to otherwise. It is actually technically optional, but uh, there's some stuff there you don't want to miss. Now, as you can see here, you heard chickens clucking. There are chickens here, big black cocks. Uh, 
I don't like messing with them. They're they're kind of pointless and they're kind of mean. There is something cool under this house though. So I'll go ahead and choke the chicken out, so to speak. And if you kill them, then you can see this little these little pots back here, and you can actually creep in. If you don't want to have to deal with the giant chickens, then guess what? You don't have to. And there's some good stuff under here. Three light coin purses. Each one holds a hundred sen. Very, very good. Now, because I've gotten the, uh, the little bell charm, uh, I actually want to go back. But before I do that, let's see. I got 200 sen, and I've got 300 in the bags, so I'm going to actually make use of that. Up here is a vendor. Let's go see the vendor. Hello, vendor. ごくよ。and this is the Crow's Bed Memorial Mob. The Memorial Mob are uh, basically a gang of vendors that just hang around places where there's a battlefield. And there's something that he has that I want. Robert's Firecrackers. Another tool for your uh, prosthetic. Now you can get it elsewhere, but uh, it's actually pretty useful, so I'm going to go ahead and sell my three coin bags that I got to him so that I can afford it. この辺りで使うでないぞ。カラスどもがビビっちまう。奴らいかに賢くとも、超獣には違いないからの。ひどいことは so cool. Now, uh, you see that guy standing over there by the red flag to the right of the fire, or lower right of the fire? You don't want to take that guy on on his own terms. So, uh, let's find a different way around. Before we do that, though, I definitely want to come pick this up right here. Gotchin's Sugar, yet another candy. Now, I normally will not bother with sugars. I just, I don't care to use stat buffs. Gotchin's Sugar, however, uh, increases your stealth for a bit of time, and it makes you, you know, maxed out stealth, basically. So it's super, super useful in a lot of situations where you need to get the jump on the enemy. So I'm definitely going to grab that. There's a couple places I'm going to make use of it. Now I could go back uh, right now to the uh, to the dilapidated temple if I wanted to, but at the moment I ain't trying to do that. I want to go ahead and get to the next idol. So the grapple points that have that downward pointing arrow are just swing points. Cool stuff. That brings me around back of this guy. And this guy, whew, you see that cannon in his hands? That uh, That's not fun to play with. Do not let him use that. Alright. So, I've gotten that. Let's see, just grab up a little bit of loot. All the loot you could grab. It's good for money. Burning pile of a horse corpse, apparently, down here. That's not unsettling at all. And of course the gates are locked. So, remember, this is a game with verticality and platforming. So, uh, use your brain. Look around. Another big black chicken. And, uh, yeah. There we go. So here is the next idol. Boop. And, uh, as you can see there, it has just added in enhanced physical attributes. There are three ways to make yourself stronger in this game. Well, four ways, I guess. Number one, you collect prayer beads. Once you have four prayer beads, you can make a prayer necklace, which increases your health and, as a result, increases your posture. There are ten total necklaces in the game. So, forty total beads. And I'll be showing you where you get each one as we go. The second way you can make yourself stronger is through memories. There are a limited amount of bosses, proper bosses, in this game. And when you beat a proper boss, which we're not going to be doing this episode, but, you know, soon we will, 
then you get their memory and you can use their memory to enhance your attack power as you can see you got attack power on the right each memory enhances your attack power by one and uh, you can reach a total of 99 through all sorts of new game pluses and whatnot uh, the third way that you can make yourself stronger is by gaining uh, skills. But to get skills, you have to unlock esoteric texts, which uh, I don't have any of right now. But thankfully, because I have gained a skill point, that means that I can unlock the esoteric text when I go back to visit Orangutan. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to just turn around and head back towards this gate here. And we have a little friend over here. Another vendor. What do you mean that night? なあ、旦那。and in this case yeah you do want to give him the 10 sen because he's actually a uh, fairly useful little vendor he's got uh, one or two cool items so yeah you can have my 10 sen <laughs> ああ、もちろんでさ。あの奪った。そのさなかでさ、旦那と会ったのは。旦那は何かを探してた。そんな風に見えやしたね。足が知ってるのはそんなもんでさ。そうか。ああ。あの世もちょうどそんな顔してやした。今も何かをお探しで。and that's all the information I'm going to be purchasing him from him for the moment. But having paid him that 10 sen, then the next time you come back to him, either after a rest or leaving the area and coming back, he will actually be carrying goods. There's nothing he's going to be carrying that I'm particularly interested in getting at the moment. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to be making a rush to get right back to him. Now, up ahead is another mini-boss. But before I take on that mini-boss that you can see up there to the left of that light, I'm going to take a quick trip back to the dilapidated temple. So, I've got a couple things to do right now. I've picked up two prosthetic attachments, and I've gotten a gourd seed, so... Give her the gourd seed. Yoshikorete. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
悪い気はしません貢献があれば奇妙と思うことでも遺産ですべしそれが我が師道元の教えですのでそうかひょうたんの種を見つけたならばまた持ってきてください薬水のかさ増しをしましょうおや何やらちぎんとああこの鈴だろう仏に備えろと渡された、うん、あなたにゆかりのある鈴でしょうかならば武士殿と話してみてはどうですか仏のことならばあの人が詳しいでしょう Awesome. So there are a total of nine gourd seeds in the game. And I know it only shows one use right now. It's, it's not going to fill up until you rest. But that's fine. Let's go talk to the sculptor. それが忍びじゃなわしは仏を掘らなきゃならお前さんはお前さんで好きにしな And I guess you do have to talk to him a bit Let's ask about the left arm このひどい腕俺に何をしたそいつは忍び義手石腕の狼にはおあつらい向きの牙じゃろう人グを持ってきたら忍び義手に仕込んでやるそうすりゃその義手のありがたみがわかるじゃろうさ<笑>しゃべりすぎたな,いいな So yeah, you gotta at least talk to him about a little something そうじゃがこのあれ寺にはおかしな客がまあまあ訪れる寺を出て右手の広場にもそうした者が一人おる。妙なことになっておる者同士、気が合うかもしれんな。Awesome. So he's probably referring to Hanbei. Let's talk some more. なんだお前さ、勘が戻ってきたようじゃな。ちっとは。忍びらしくなってきたように見えるとっておきな And boom, the Shinobi Esoteric Text、uh, This unlocks the Shinobi skill tree which allows you to learn various skills and such Very useful, must have, definite, what much wow これは忍びの技じゃ侍には真似できぬ忍びの戦う術が書いてあるまあどうするかはお前さん次第よ。戦う術など忍びだけでもあるまいって。Okay, so we got that. And that basically brings us to skills, which we'll talk about in a minute. 手に入れた。忍具か。お、忍び義手は牙じゃと言うたが、忍具を仕込むことで。その牙は形を変えることができるようになる。敵立てならば打ち砕き、素早き敵ならば仕留め打つ。仕込んだ人間が増えるだけ、敵を殺す術も増えるじゃろう。殺す相手なりの殺し方を持つ。そういうことじゃ。随分と詳しい。
血生臭いことを言うておるから仏の顔も鬼になるのよどれ貸してみろわしが任務を仕込んでやろう All right, so now we've unlocked the Present Shinobi Prosthetic option. And essentially you just use that to, uh, you know, do things to it. I'm going to load up both of these. Costs you nothing. And... So now I've unlocked the prosthetic tools. So let's go ahead and equip them. You can equip up to three at a time and cycle through them with uh, the Y button or on the uh, PlayStation controller, it's the triangle button. Let's see if he will uh, give us the thing with just two. ノーバの仏様に備えろと わしの Looks like he uh, won't give it to us yet. Okay, so then, um, I think I got a little bit more time. Let's just go ahead and pray to the Buddha with our little chime, skip the cutscene, and three years ago. So here we are in a different place. Oh, there we go. Another pellet. That's that's nice to have. Let's just rest here. There you go. And uh, we've got the acquire skills menu opened up. So this is the uh, first tree we have access to, the Shinobi Arts. I'm actually gonna save up so that I can unlock Mikiri Counter because I consider that absolutely essential. And I'm actually going to do what I normally do, which is blitz through the next part here, just to pick up some stuff that I need. So uh, let's get to it. This is the part where I start playing like I normally play and I stop explaining things. Alright. Now, uh, if you want to skip a bit of this, you can uh, just jump into the water and swim across. Water doesn't actually kill you, you can swim in this game. But uh, I'd like a bit of money and I'd like a bit of experience, so let's go to it. Uh, now to use your Shinobi prosthetics, you've got to get spirit emblems, which I just got one. That was that little cross that flew out of him. Uh, you get them by killing enemies and sometimes they'll just randomly be around the world. And the best way to deal with wolves, throw a star at them. Die. Yeah, you gotta take care of wolves quickly. I'm only bothering with these guys because I want some experience. Awesome. Now this level here is actually a very good level for uh, you know learning and uh, practicing all the uh, verticality and, and such that there is. But as I said, I'm going to start blitzing through some stuff, so I'm going to skip by a portion of this here. I'm going over here. I'm going going to run along the tops of the walls. Oh no, I ran too far. Okay. No problem. Maybe I should shut my mouth so that I control myself. 
So you can avoid most of what's going on here just by running across the walls. And I just want one thing here. First off, get rid of that guy. Right by the fire here, there's this thing, the flame barrel. Now I'm gonna run the smeg away from everybody here. Ow, wolf. Ow, sword. And then I'm gonna jump up this left wall. Alright. That brings me over to this roof. Bring me over to this roof. And... I'm gonna let these guys wander away. Actually, the dudes that have axes are more dangerous, even though they uh, don't have hats. So I want to get rid of that guy. And inside of this house right here is the Shinobi Axe of the Monkey. Extremely useful as well. So I'm gonna do one more thing before I go here, which is open up this door. FromSoft games are always full of shortcuts, and I'm going to grab the sugar. And now that I've accomplished what I mean meant to in this area for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and warp back over to the uh, abandoned, not abandoned, to the dilapidated temple. And uh, I believe that now that I have at least three shinobi prosthetic items, that uh, he's actually going to give me something. さて<笑> So let's go ahead and fit those two prosthetics that we got. The loaded axe and the flame vent. Both incredibly useful as well. And I get the prosthetic esoteric text, which is the prosthetic skill tree. お前さんの牙でどう噛み殺すか。それが書いてある。要は忍び騎士を使った戦いの術じゃな。わかった。全く。義手の忍び技などもはや無用と思っておったが、わからんものよな。ではな。Beautiful. So, let's go ahead and equip that flame vent, because I'm not going to end this on just a boring old note. I'm going to do a little bit of action before we get done with this here. So, let's go ahead and commune. And because I have a few Sen, I'm going to purchase uh, you know, as many spirit emblems as I can. These are basically ammunition. Now you can only carry a certain amount of spirit emblems at a time, it starts out at 15, and uh, you can eventually get it up to 20 by doing various things. Just to show here, we've got the uh, prosthetic skills tree here, and there's a lot useful on this one, a lot that I use, but again, I'm saving up for that two points. So let's round this up by going back to the outskirts, outskirts wall, stairway, whatever. And I'll check in with Asayama here. Nana, matte mashita ze. Itadaita zen yo motode ni shinaoshi ire yashita. Sa, katte itte kudase. Sorry, Anayama. <laughs> Asayama. Anyways, uh, obviously I can't afford anything, but he's got a phantom kunai, which uh, I'll be I'll be coming back for later. Tokoro de nana, kiite kudase. あしはね、飽きないをもっと大きくしたいと考えてやす。この足縄いつ滅びるかもわからねえ。いわば沈みかけた船だ。つまり 
なり上がる好機じゃねえかと思うんでさそこで一つ頼みがありやすなんだアシナの侍どもが今欲しがっているものは何か探ってきちゃくれやせんかそいつが分かればアシナの侍どもと取引ができやす旦那は忍びだ敵方から情報を仕入れるいい耳をお持ちのはずぜひお願いしやす So yes, he actually has a、uh, little quest for you and you can follow his quest line through all the way to the end if you wish and the reward for that is you get a little item that reduces the cost of items from various vendors. Of course you don't get it till the end of the game and in New Game Plus its use is you know, dubious to say the least. So、uh, I'm not going to be following his quest all the way through Because、uh, one of the NPCs involved, I like to have a happier ending for. Now, right here, there is a memory of、uh, something to do with Emma and、uh, Kuro, but I'm not going to do that right now. That's that chicken seeing me. You, you just stay where you are, cock. All right. Now, these two are talking about something. I'm not gonna bother talking to them. Let's just sneak attack this guy. And up there is the next mini boss. So, I'm going to use a tactic to、uh, try and get him down a little easier, because he's gonna be one of them two bar bastards. That's why I picked up the Gachin Sugar. It's extremely useful, like I said. I wanna pop that. And then what you do is you sneak up on this guy here. Sneak up, come around to the side of him, and death blow! So there goes one of his health bars. Now, the flame vent is useful on this guy because he's a red eyes. Whoa, no, you don't. And red eyes don't like flames. So one, two, three, four, five. You get a good five wax in on him. Now, you don't, you don't get to do that inf infinitely and repeatedly. You gotta give him like a second or two between doing that. But、uh, as you can see, it's a real good way to、uh, distract him. And you don't want to let him grab you if you can. Typically, my tactic for big motherfucker bosses is just kind of run around them. Don't, don't try and go for six. He, he will grab your. Whoa! Easy there, buddy. And boom, there you go. Got my prayer bead, and I acquired a skill. Shinobi Medicine Rank 1 basically means healing is more effective. So that's good. I got my second skill point, I took down a boss, and I got my second prayer bead. So、um, I made that fight look easy,、uh, and you know, it can be that easy, you just gotta be confident and also、uh, know when you can get in there. For big guys like that, I don't generally like to try blocking. I,、uh, I just go for the attack and try to avoid the hits. But that's gonna be enough for now. Thank you all for watching.